Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. Now, in the uh, last part of this of this video, we set up a journey to go from HAL Base on Phobos over to Deimos, and I have a copy of HAL Base uh, sitting on Deimos, so we have a, a target to aim for once we get there. Ran into a little bit of trouble in the uh, last video getting IMFD set up. There's just an issue with uh, where it doesn't work quite the way I'm used to when you're when you're on a body that has a gravitational influence that's basically nothing or it's it's very low. What ends up happening is that IMFD realizes that the body that you're orbiting, in this case Mars, has more of an influence than the body that you're actually on, which in that case was Phobos. But I've also ran into this when I'm around the moons of Saturn that are much larger, you know, they're big enough to have their, uh, you know, they're big enough to have a spherical shape like a regular moon, but ma uh, Saturn is just so massive that it has more of a gravitational influence than than the moon that you're on. Like when you're on Enceladus, for example, you're, when you're on the um, ground, you have a gravitational influence of 0 0.10 according to orbit MFD. So that means if you want to go from, say, Enceladus to Titan, um, as an example, you, you will, you'll run into this kind of a problem as well. So uh, we'll deal with that another day, but I, that's something I wanted to point out. Go ahead and switch camera views here. And if we take a look uh, outside, we can see that we really haven't gone anywhere. We haven't, well, we haven't gone anywhere since the last video because I hit pause right after. So let me go ahead and unpause. And there you can see us, you know, drifting away from Phobos relatively quickly in the uh, very cool Aero Freighter. So we're going to go ahead and warp time forward until we're more than halfway over to Deimos. And then we're going to see what we can do to correct some of this, uh, some of this error in our, in our PEA. When I did the, when I did the transfer, when I left Phobos, I didn't get a PEA of zero, which is what I really want. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly zero and we don't want to aim for necessarily the middle of Deimos, but we want it to be, you know, right around zero and we're off by, you know, we were off originally by over 300 kilometers. That may not sound like much, but you got to remember that these orbits are so close, that's actually a pretty good number. So let's go ahead and warp time forward, get a little bit farther out. You can see this is where we are if you look closely in IMFD, and you can see our PET, that's how long it's going to take us to get there, which is only, you know, 30,000 seconds. So we're dealing with, uh, you know, a pretty small system here. We're going from one asteroid, essentially, to another one. So climbing out away from uh, Mars. Go a little faster. Let's jump back inside and see exactly where we are. So we're already, we're already out to here. And we're, we're going to there. So let's get a little bit farther away get a little bit less gravity from mars i think what i'll do is i'll just use that spot right there and for no other reason than it's just a nice line so right about here we'll come back to 1x and we're only 10,000 seconds away from deimos now let's go ahead and look outside see if we can see where all this stuff's at So there's Deimos in front of us, which we can't really see very well because it's so dark. All right, let's... Uh, now, for first of all, rather than setting up a delta-v maneuver, I just want to see what happens if I just sort of tr tap translation here. So a little bit of inward, it's helping, and it's it, I'd say it's definitely a little bit better than what I was getting when I was the, in closer to Mars. So coming out this far is helping a little bit. And let me just tap plane change just to see there if we're getting anything. That's actually helping quite a bit. So somehow we introduced uh, some plane change or we missed missed having plane change correction. A little bit more on the M word, a little bit more on the plane change. Things are starting to slow down now. So more M word. And we'll just go back and forth. It looks like we'll be able to get our PEA all the way down to the surface with just a little bit of uh, translation. 
that's always nice, you know, so you don't have to mess setting mess with setting up a delta V maneuver. A little bit of plane change and more inward. Of course I say inward, but you'll note that I'm not pointing to prograde. So inward currently uh, would be mo more like more like prograde because of, because of the direction that I'm facing. I'll show you what I mean by that. If I actually go to prograde, um, I, I'm, I'm actually almost retrograde at the moment. So inward from this vantage point is um, it's actually more like outward. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and get the mighty arrow freighter facing forward, and you'll note that when I do that. If I now press inward, it won't give me a benefit necessarily because we're we're now facing a different direction. Okay, now let's see which um, which ones make the biggest difference. So if I do maybe a little bit of forward, that's uh, hurting. So let me actually go backwards. Um, you know, retrograde. That's helping. And now let's see what inward and outward do. See now now. Now, uh, this one's actually hurting, so I want to go the other direction. I want to go... Actually, they're, neither one of them are doing me any good at the moment. So it's just going to be retrograde at this point. Actually, plane change is the winner right now. Yeah, we got our PEA all the way down to... Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go with that. Again, we don't want to be... We don't want to try to target the center of Demos or anything, especially not when we're this close. Okay, let's bring up uh, Orbit MFD. It's reference Mars. Let's target Demos, and I'm just doing this just uh, just so we have some information to look at there. We don't really need it because we have all that over there. Okay, let's go ahead and warp time forward. Now we're only nine thousand seconds out, and in fact, what I may want to do now. Go ahead and reference Demos and put that on the HUD. Rotation. Yeah, let's actually do that. Now, if I go prograde to Demos, I should be looking right at it. Although, being as small as it is, we won't be able to see much yet. Let's go F9, and there's Demos out there, and yeah, we can't even hardly see it. It's even still. Okay, it's warp time four. Get down to maybe a thousand seconds out, something like that. Warping time four at a hundred. We can afford a thousand, but we want to be careful. Actually, let's get down to three thousand seconds and then see what um, burn time calculator says our breaking time is going to be. Okay, we'll go with that. Let's go. F uh, Turn forward and look at Demos now. Now, if we really want to be super fuel efficient, we want to be retrograde to Demos because we'll get more braking out of the uh, full power of the main engines. But you can see Demos out there. It's still very dark because the sun is on the other side, so we're not getting any reflection off the front. So it probably doesn't really show up in the video playback. Okay, our, our difference in velocity between ourself and Demos is currently 327 meters a second. By the time we get there, it's supposed to be uh, 331, or let's call it 332, our periapsis velocity. That's what this number over here means. So if I bring up burn time calculator, and I put in that number, and we'll, again, we'll just round up to 332, so we'll say delta V, 332. Now it's telling me that if I use the full power of the main engines, which I'm not going to, but if I did, that I would need to begin braking when I'm at least 5,220 meters out. And in my opinion, you want to brake um, more than that so that you're in position uh, above Demos and you have time to do any maneuvers. So I would, I would probably start braking at 6,500 meters. That way I give myself at least a full kilometer above above the surface of Demos. But we're not going to use the full power of the main. We're going to use uh, the retros. 
So we're going to actually begin braking when we are 20 kilometers. Uh, let's let's round that up to 21. And then I'm going to say I want another kilometer on top of that. So I'm going to say 22 kilometers is when I need to begin my braking. And one other thing we can do, uh, let's set up VOR VTOL now so that we don't have to scramble to do that later. So we'll bring up ComNav on this side and we're going to bring up HalBase for, for Demos. There, I got HalBase 1 and HalBase 2. Fortunately, the frequencies are the same for both of them, so it doesn't matter which one I pick. Although I probably should change the name of the one on Demos to like HalBase D or something. And we're going to say uh, 129. We don't even really need the long range, so we're not even going to do that. We're just going to go for landing pad 4. That's the one. So landing pad 1, 2, and 3, those are the small ones that are meant for the um, Delta Glider and XR2. But the landing pad 4, is it's, it's three times the size of the other one, so we're going to go for that one. That's going to be 129.90. So let's get that set. 129.90. Nine zero, got it. Now we can go ahead and close that out. Um, I guess we could set up the long range. That way, we know at least when we're within 500 kilometers of Demos. Let's go. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go 129, 50, and now we can close it out, and we'll bring that up over here. So we want 129.50. So when this when this comes online, we know we're actually within 500 kilometers of Deimos. Let's bring Interplanetary MFD back up and warp time forward a little bit more. Um, I don't know if it shows us what our current distance is or not. Oh, well, we have it up here. We're still 800 kilometers out. So when this gets to 500, this should come online. It'll be roughly 500. It may not be exact, but... So right about, let's see how exact it is. So, so there is 500 right now. And let's see when this comes on exactly. And there it is. So it's, it, again, and again, it won't be perfect because there is some kind of logic built into Orbiter to attempt to give you a, you know, range distance based on uh, how does it figure it out? It's like the higher you are above, like when you're when you're on Earth and you're sitting on the landing pad at Cape Canaveral, you'll notice that there's like a little green line around your around your delta glider. That's your radio range. But when you get up to a kilometer, you'll notice that that little green circle expands way out. And when you're up to ten kilometers, it's much larger, and so on. All right, so again, we said we needed a break when we were 22 kilometers out, so we can continue forward for now. Can watch our altitude here. And here comes, uh, here comes Deimos now, clearly in view. Now there's one thing to consider. Uh, that is, this distance might be to the center versus, uh, you know, to the surface. Uh, well, that's not what that distance is. But I know when you have attitude MFD, the, the altitude it gives you is to the center of the object. And you actually have to account for that by adding a couple of extra kilometers or else you'll start breaking too late. But, but we're not going to have that problem here. So let's go forward a little more. And we're not going to have any problem of actually hitting Deimos anyway, because you can see our velocity vectors above it and past it. But let's get rotated. Get ready to begin braking here in just a second. We're at 28 kilometers distance now. Okay, getting ready to engage the uh, full power of the retro engines. So we'll go. We'll go, uh, we'll go now, just to make sure we don't overshoot here. Now 
You can see the uh, retro engine there and on the other side. And you also know when we do this, the other side of our orbit, you know, it starts expanding because what end up, what really ends up happening here, is we do this breaking burn. We're we're basically making our orbit match the orbit of Deimos. So in order for that to happen, the low side of our orbit, which was over here when we left Phobos, that that side of our orbit has to extend all the way out to here because that makes perfect sense. You know, if you think about it. Since we're gonna, we're basically rendezvousing with the space station in a sense. In this case, the space station is just a big, large, big hunk of rock. So, in order to rendezvous with this big hunk of rock, our orbit has to match the orbit of this big hunk of rock perfectly. So, in order for that to happen, then our orbital line that you see here will be exactly the same as Deimos by the time our difference in velocity is zero. And our current uh, difference in velocity is 100 meters a second. And we don't necessarily want to slow all the way down to zero because we do still have to find, um, you know, Howl Base, which I can tell according to this instrument here is going to be off to our port side. So we probably will slow down more or less to zero because there's not, it's not going to do us a whole lot of good to go forward. Although it's 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 to the left and it's forward, so we don't want to slow down completely to zero. In fact, we'll go with uh, we'll go with that. So, killing the engine. Now we're going to put in a bunch of translation, or well, a little bit of translation, in order to make sure that we are moving off to the left a bit, and then we'll rotate over that direction. But you can see if you look in interplanetary MFD, our orbit now is almost perfectly matched with with Deimos and it will be perfectly matched here when we're done adjusting all of our uh, all of our stuff all of our velocities so let's go ahead and rotate go ahead and rotate now and I'm just looking at the VOR VTOL Make sure it thinks we are heads up. Make sure the HUD thinks that we're heads up. Okay, we are straight. We're heading straight to the base now, and I can actually see it coming up over the horizon, though it probably doesn't show up too well in the video playback. Everything translated properly. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get landed here. We're at about 20 minutes on this part of the video, but I don't think we'll have any problems getting down here. Now, I do want to watch my altitude. I don't want to end up going through the mesh or anything. You can go through the mesh, but I don't want I don't want that to happen. It just looks bad. So now technically we're climbing a little bit and we don't really want to climb, so let's okay, let's go ahead and get rotated so that we are level according to uh Dima or more or less level. We don't have to, we don't need it to be perfect because you can see as we go forward, as we're coming up over the uh the sort of invisible sphere of that is Demos, we're naturally leveling out. So that means if I bring my position all the way to zero now, then we're gonna end up pointing up. In fact I could even go farther down. Um, matter of fact, we can probably go ahead and come all the way yeah, down to about 30 because, as, again, as we go forward, it's going to just naturally straighten itself out. You can see what I'm saying? The HUD, the uh, numbers, they're coming down because what's happening is we're coming up over the surface and it's such a, uh, you know, such a small body that we uh, come up over that surface very quickly. If you look really co close there, you'll see how base. I'm going to put in a little bit of down translation again because I don't want to climb. Four. 
little bit of translation to the left because I can see according to the VOR VTOL that my um, my uh, flight path is a bit off so I can correct that a little bit more down translation again wherever the velocity vector is pointed that's where you're going so let's uh, make sure we're going in the right to the right place and yeah, a little bit of time warp 1000 500 400 300 let's come out of time warp now let's fix things a little bit 200 Translate a bit to the left, the other left, my right. Rotation. And we'll get rotated so that we're even or level. No need for that, it's just in the way at this point. Put the gear down before I forget about it. And there will be a little bit of maneuvering once I get over top the uh, over top the base. Kind of looks these these types of bases like remind me of oil barracks out in the middle of the ocean, like a mining platform. Okay, let's uh, slow down a little bit. How fast are we moving forward? Yeah, we're moving forward at 26, so let's slow down. Translation. Rotation. Let's get rotated to the... 50. 40. Translation. Rotate it so that we're level and rotation. start rotating now. Because I've noticed um, one thing about this landing pad because it because it's at an angle and that was necessary. But because it's at an angle, you can't have your VOR VTL perfectly to one of these. Uh, you know, I'm going to call them cardinal positions, but north, east, south, or west. If it's perfectly lined up, it you won't be lined up on the pad. So we're going to go until this is off of the center just a little bit. Maybe right about there. What you would actually want to do is know what the heading is, but and I don't know exactly what it is. I just know it's not perfectly I just know it's not perfect on one of these positions. sure I'm not sinking because I don't really want to sink quite yet distance from the center of the pad or the distance from my where I'm going is 200 meters you can see that counting down What I'm doing is I'm kind of slipping sideways over to the pad. So if I take a look outside, you can see. And actually, I'm not quite slipping in the right direction. It's kind of what I have in mind, but I'm, I'm not. See, I'm still not angled quite right, but I can't tell. At least not without looking outside. But I'm trying to slide over this way, so that I can have the landing platform in front of me. But I'll have to rotate now. Translation. Feel like a, a captain of a cruise liner or something trying to come into dock. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. 
maybe if I line up with the tower from my vantage point so right about here still don't feel like I'm lined up now we'll go forward can't really see anything from the virtual cockpit yeah even if you tilt your camera you really can't see where you're going so you have to rely on the uh, the instrumentation for sure okay still don't feel like I'm rotated quite right forward a little faster actually come to think of it I don't know where like the VOR VTO I don't know where it thinks zero is at because clearly we're not ready to land and it thinks that I'm past you know what that might be my fault though when I set this up when I set up the landing pad or the landing when I set this base up on Demos, I may not have done the radio tower quite right. So, just have to eyeball it. Rotation. Make sure we're level. Translation. Translate a bit to the right. 20. Rotation. Just rotating a bit because I don't feel like I'm straight. Oops. Ten. Translation. Okay, we're almost down, just a few more meters to go. I can tell I've got to go forward still by quite a bit. Ten. Rotation. Still don't feel quite straight. Maybe now. I feel like all this needs to be beyond my viewpoint before I can settle down. If it's not, then I feel like I'm back too far. Translation. But yeah, according to this, we're 300 meters past the uh, landing pad. You know what, though? Did I ever switch? No, I never switched over, that's why. So yeah, that is an accurate number, okay. Okay, let's bring our horizontal speed to zero. Go level. And easier on down. Okay, let's make sure that we kill, turn off the level. Translation. And we just need to settle down now. Okay, I think we're settled down. It's a little hard to know for sure when you're landed on these really small bodies because um, the gravity is so slight that you don't get like a very clear you know, ka-chunk type of feeling, like when you come down to Earth, you know, or even the moon, there's a very definite sense that you're down. But on these bodies, it's like, you know, you drop a paper clip and it takes eight minutes to fall to the ground, so you don't really know for sure when you're down. But uh, I feel like, yeah, we're completely settled now. And we're basically straight. Um, you can see it's not perfect. Uh, one way you can tell is, like, if you look at your landing 
skids. Uh, this one over here is going to be the best example. You can see how that landing skids right on the line. And like this one is a bit off. But it's pretty close. Um, and that's actually a good angle there too. You can still see we're off. And really, I think I even want to be a little more forward than what I am. Maybe actually... Well, in terms of pillar support, it's probably right where it needs to be. The big heavy end is right on that big fat pillar. So that's probably like right where we need to be. But just otherwise, it kind of feels like I'm, I'm a bit off back here. Because like if the crew had to come out and do any maintenance on the engines or something, you know, they're hanging off the edge. Whereas this part can still go forward, you know, by several more meters without being in the way of the hangar. You know, I think I may have requested this platform a little bit on the small side. We might have wanted to make like one more square so that the, so that it's four long. I don't know. It's it's still really good. Okay, anyway, that is a transfer from Phobos to Demos. And we're over 30 minutes on this part of the video, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. And if you like the video, go ahead and hit the uh, thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. More importantly, leave a comment. And if you have any uh, thoughts on using IMFD, specifically IMFD, not so much Transex, but specifically IMFD, if you have any thoughts on using that to transfer from one small body to another, go ahead and leave those comments down below. And uh, give this flight a uh, shot yourself. I'll leave a, a link in the description down below where you can download the uh, scenario that I used when I started. Now, it will require that you already have Howlbase installed, so make sure you have that. Um, but yeah, you can at least start over there on Phobos using the same scenario that I used and uh, see what you can come up with in terms of, uh, you know, a better solution. And the, uh, the uh, scenario uses whatever today's date is, so don't worry about using the same date that I'm using, just whatever date you happen to be running the scenario on and see what you can come up with. See if you can come up with something way better than the uh, 785 that I initially came up, th came up with there in IMFD. And I will uh, see you in the next video.